Hi everybody, welcome to Gunpa TV. Hey guys. Brought to you by Hotline Japan. We're back in the studio after our week-long Oban holiday. Yes. Yeah, Ryan, did you go anywhere? I just went to my in-laws place uh, in uh, Kanagawa. Cool, cool. And I yourself? also went to my in-laws, but they live in Chichijima. Yeah, you're lucky. Which is 1,000 kilometers south. I have to take a boat for 25 hours, if that's lucky. Actually, it's great. It was, it was so cool there, not like Tokyo and where we are now, where it's 37 degrees every day and all humidity all the time. Like, I'm really hot. Even right now, I'm really hot. <laughs> I need a drink. He's hot all the time. <laughs> it's an interesting Pepsi you got there, Sid. Mm. Where's mine? You weren't thinking about me. It's uh, down the department store. Yeah. Yeah, so for those who don't know, this is a Gente limited edition can from uh, Pepsi and Gundam to do with their uh, Gundam from Tokyo. And they come with a whole bunch of different artwork. It's really cool. Kind of, it is really cool. They actually yeah. have a promotion now for a mega size, Ryan. Is it uh, a mega size Coke? It's a mega size RX-782 in Pepsi colors. Oh, I, I, you have to I send won't in a get postcard. it. You have to send oh. in a postcard and hope that you win it. I think there's 500 of them or something. Why doesn't Coke, I, I prefer Coke. Mm. Why doesn't Coke Me too. do something? Why doesn't Coke do something? Because Pepsi pays for all the licensing. Yeah, it's a good idea. Mm. The, who did the um, Final Fantasy ones? Uh, that was like a unique drink though. Yeah, that, yeah. Wa that wasn't Pepsi or Coke. It was a, their own Final Fantasy beverage something. Right? Yeah. Square Enix got involved with that. Hold on a second. So on this island, were there any mm. other people with boats and flags trying to get on your island? <laughs> uh, it's, it, it's all held by Japan and everybody knows oh, that. Oh yeah, it's so. the other side. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not near the Senkaku Islands or the Takashima Islands or the Russian yes. Pound Islands. So yeah, no problems. How does that taste? Does it taste extra gundam -y? Mm. I'm it, jealous. I want my own Gundam. Can I buy this in a store? Yeah, just go down to the department store at lunch and pay 100 yen and get yourself a can. Oh, it's available even here. Sweet. Mm. That's the great thing in Japan is you get so many mm -hmm. cool... So much goodies. Yeah. Yeah. Now I need to drink Coke. <sighs> I want some Pepsi. Well, like All right, so tea. let's let's actually oh, yeah, do yeah. something yeah. properly. Gundam. Yeah. Talk stuff. about plastic models. Uh, I got some stuff to show. Do you want me to do that first? Yep, I got to show a bit of my tank later. Oh, cool. And I got a Micros kit. So do you want to start? I will start and we're just going to look at the stuff that uh, came in during the week that we were off and before. Yes. Uh, from the Shizuoka Hobby Show, we showed this one. The Alexander. It's got some great box art here, and if I flip this around, you can see that this guy is capable of uh, assuming these poses that you see on the box and, of course, in the anime, which is really cool. But what actually is inside the box here? Well, we only saw the completed kit, so now we get to look at the runners. And the first thing that I noticed, of course, is all these, these red foil stickers for all the uh, deep panel lines that this thing has, as well as this thing's pretty cool. Actually, some figures here to go along with this guy. So, for anybody who's interested in the Code Geese, so you now have your, a new uh, plastic model kit to build and check out the uh, panel line detail on these things. That's pretty awesome. So there's the, uh, the non-gone kind of kit for the day. Yep. <laughs> ah. All right. Now uh, H3, this is the orbital version. And I don't know if you're aware, Ryan, but uh, there's different versions of each kit. You know, the age one had the normal, the Titus, the Spallow. The age uh, two had the normal. And uh, of course we had the Dark Hound and things like that. But uh, the age three has the Orbital and the Fortress. And this is the Orbital. This is probably the bulkiest of the uh, Gundam age suit itinerations, but I kind of like it that way. I think it looks different from the, the previous versions, the age one and the age two. And of course you can see that it's, uh, it's got a lot of color in here. And uh, there's some fairly large parts in this kit. I mean, this is all for the, the backpack. And you can make the, uh, the Viper and the Core Fighter in two different, two different sets. And then uh, assemble that to make the Orbital, which is really cool. And of course, Bandai gives you the marking stickers that you're going to need. So, more Gundam H fun, including... And last but not least, Ryan. I always say that, but it doesn't mean anything. Do you recognize this guy? I do. Uh, he seems smaller though. <laughs> he seems smaller, yes. He, this is not the mega size, this is the master grade. Which is even cooler because... How can it be cooler, Sid? It transforms, Ryan. Just like that. So I, I seem to remember somebody being very very firm about liking the transformation. I think I said, Try does it transform? I was, never said you I was You were always firm. giving people heat because they didn't transform? Does that kit transform? People are used to be me. Does that kit transform? <laughs> does that kit transform? <laughs> so anyway, it transforms. Hmm. No part swapping at all. Of course, it's a master grade. You expect that now these days. And uh, we'll 
just give you a brief look at the transformation process in the manual here. You can see how it starts here. You actually pull out the side of the torso armor and raise it above its head, kind of like you do with the resil. But with the, uh, the Gundam H2, yeah, it kind of looks like the H1, but there's so many differences that Bandai has gone ahead and made new runners. You can see that they've got all these large pieces here, which you will not find on the H1, as well as these, these pieces, quite a bit different. But the uh, hand runner, which is buried in here, is the same. But uh, because of the transformation, of course, you get a lot of little parts when it comes to the frame. You actually get uh, four runners just for the frame, not including polycaps. So if anybody is interested in age two, like Ryan was with the mega size. I'm interested one, in mega size. This one transforms, Ryan. But it's small. But it's not mega size. You can't win them all, Ryan. All right, with that out of the way, what do you have for us, Ryan? Oh, I'll just put this over here. Yeah, put it over there. I have uh, the VF25G. And why do you have a Macross kit? Because I was reminiscing, Sid. Yeah. Because, you know, when I was 10, mm -hmm. end of the 80s, ago. maybe? No. Well, whatever. <laughs> I was watching Robotech. <laughs> Don't know when. <laughs> yeah. It's a long time ago. <laughs> the first yeah. time I saw Robotech, and you know when the, the robot transforms into the yeah, jet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was just like, I just remember just being floored by that show. I was like, this is the coolest thing ever japan's awesome look what they do well actually in south africa i didn't even know it was japanese yeah i, I just assumed i it was used American. to love a cartoon called battle of the planets when i was a kid yeah. which is actually a gotcha man and it's japanese but i didn't know it at the time it's like heidi yeah. heidi was japanese i didn't know maya the bee and my dog finders and all that <laughs> <laughs> anyway getting back to yeah. to robotech i was thinking i would love them to make a robotech movie yeah the thing is that we're in the age of the superhero movie again and yeah. the, the remix, remix, robotech? comics and anime remi uh, remix transformers was kind of yeah so my yeah. question to you okay if there was a robotech movie who should direct it oh my gosh like think of a reboot think of who, yeah. who did who did the star trek reboot abrams jj abrams J. J. abrams or the guy who did dark knight uh, maybe ridley scott uh, can I say not Michael Bay? Yes. Okay. No Michael Bay. No Michael Bay. Well, the guy did Lord of the Rings. That would be interesting. Peter Jackson doing the Macross. Well, he could do a good like epic space opera. I mean, he could. He should be doing Battlestar Galactica and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, he was meant to do Halo. Mm -hmm. But then they did District 9. Who would I like to... Oh, you know who I want to do it? Who? Uh, Miike Takeshi, the Japanese oh. director. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that would be, be pretty cool. The action would be pretty good. Yeah, there's even John Woo. John Woo, yeah. I was going to say. <laughs> oh, that's I a tough question. I need to think about it. Maybe yeah. next week. Maybe George Lucas, Ryan. That's a joke, by the way. I don't want animated monkeys and hedgehogs <laughs> and stuff. And LeBouf. <laughs> Can you imagine? They put LeBouf as the main character. Like Jar Jar running Just around in the class. <laughs> All right. Kill me now. All right, so what do you want to ask the, uh, the viewers out there? Who do you want to direct the next Robotech reboot movie? And next week, we'll actually say who wins. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep a little unofficial poll and yeah. ask some, uh, some answers. We'll plaster on Facebook, Twitter, Hobby Link, whatever. Yeah. So yeah, Say. just put it wherever you if want. There were, if they were to make a live action CGI movie of Macross, Robotech, who should direct it? Yes. Well, that's a good one. Yeah, that'd be sweet. That's a good one. Okay. All right, Ryan, what else do you got? I have questions, Sid. I don't have questions, Sid. <laughs> I have a tank to do, Sid. Let's do the tank. Okay, let's go oh, that. Yay. <laughs> nice try, buddy. Nice try. <laughs> All right, can you get set up? Yeah, I'll get set up. All right. So I've continued with my tank, and uh, it's actually been pretty easy. A very little glue is actually required. The only times I had to use glue was for these little uh, door handles over here. And in the manual, I think it actually shows that if you were like totally into it, you could actually cut these doors so they can actually open and close. Wow. Which is just uh, absolutely Hard crazy. Core. Yeah. And the other bit of glue I used was just in here to stick these guys on. Mm. But other than that, Everything else just uh, basically clips in. So all of these guys here all just clip in. 
So it's pretty straightforward and also uh, you have your little tires which is basically two pieces put together, a little rubber. Polycap? Yep, polycap. So yeah, it's pretty straightforward. And as you can see, like, I mean, this took me about half an hour and uh, like that's a big chunk of the kit almost done. So this is my kind of kit. I'll just stick the wheels on quickly. Uh, you got to be careful though. There is a specific uh, way to put on the tracks or the tires. Brian would know what these are all called, the technical terms. Sid, do you know the technical terms? No, I'm not a tank guy. Yeah. Although I do really well inside a tank on Battlefield 3. <laughs> yeah, I know. You murder it. Come on, baby. Why are you not working today? Just don't force it. These are all exactly the same, so... <laughs> there we go. You've got to use a little bit of pressure. Don't I heard. Be shy. I heard. Yeah, <laughs> I was trying to be gentle there. Come on, lady. Uh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Ooh. It's all about getting the angle correct. Yeah. Once, once you get the right angle, it, it slides on. And she got to be a little bit careful because these pieces here are actually glued. So um, I did loosen them a little bit. Mm. But that's okay. These are all good. Okay, so to put on the tracks, you basically get this uh, rubber piece. Mm -hmm. Oops, which <laughs> you cut off. <laughs> <laughs> and you get a, a couple of steel little rods to stick them together. Those are pretty small. Very small, so don't lose them. Okay, so as you can see, I've uh, cut off the tracks. I've already put in one pin. You can see it's uh, pretty small. Can you see that, Sid? Yeah, I got it. You got it? Yeah, I can see it. I also got to just make sure that uh, this, the tread, this part is the part that actually uh, fits around. Mm -hmm. The circular objects that make it move. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. I will demonstrate <laughs> putting the final pin in here. So basically you make sure these pieces are line up. Yeah. But do you put in the pin before you actually lay it around those wheels? Or do you put it around the wheels first? Uh, yes, you put it afterwards. That's what, that's what I do. And it's pretty easy to take it off and on. Oh, okay. So there's no real pressure as such. I mean, this is kind line of, up that. It's kind of dummy proof in some respects. We'll find out in a minute. Yes, we will. How it works though is it tells you to actually take one off. Yeah. And one off the edge. So there. Yeah. This one here. So you just put So you do that. Do that. And stretch it out. And then you stretch it out. Is it really uh, tight? Well, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. And then you just make sure everything fits in there nicely. Mm hmm and uh bob's your uncle and it does actually move a little it does actually move well it should move it's tank. but it's mm, mm, yeah it's <laughs> ah yeah that's to be expected <laughs> no, no big deal this isn't a kid's toy i mean you won't be going like this <laughs> but uh yeah that's it pretty easy pretty straightforward pretty yeah. sweet tank all right cool okay ryan now do you have some questions? i have some questions have good some okay questions, oh, wait actually. wait oh, hold on <laughs> Bastard. <laughs> All right, I'm ready. Is that no sugar? Pepsi Max? Uh, I don't drink no sugar garbage. Yeah, yeah. If, if, if it's a sweet it. thing, it's supposed to have sugar in it. I will drink it. Yeah, not that yeah. artificial. Yeah. Okay. okay. Hey, Sid and Ryan, I don't know if you've been asked this question, but what do you like most about living in Japan? Also, is it possible for you guys to do a segment about rating Gundam Gunpla models or, mm. or other types of model kits out there and give your reasons why the given rating? There are so many Gunplas out there that I would want to know which one is bang for the buck. Thanks a lot. Okay. One tackle, Jetfire. Tackle that first question. What do you like most about living in Japan? Um, the food. Yeah. I love the food. The quality of food, like anywhere, even like a cheap joint is just insanely mm. amazing. Variety. Electronics, toys, internet speed. Yes. 
and unlimited downloads and uploads. <laughs> like, there's no restrictions. Like, he uh, likes porn. <laughs> Sid likes porn, and we know what kind of porn. <laughs> anyway, so what, what do I like most about living in Japan, aside from porn? No, I don't actually watch that. Um, <laughs> I like, uh, of course, all the, the goodies. Like, you don't get this kind of stuff in Canada like yeah. very often. But they, it's just free stuff everywhere, campaigns, promos, and if you're interested in anime and this kind of, kind of Japanese culture, then, you know, it's all, it's everywhere. Yorubashi, it's like the yeah. big electronic stores. Yeah, Yorubashi, oh. Kanagoro, Akihabara. It's, it's fantastic to spend the time around. <sighs> I also, I like, uh, another, another thing I like about Japan is that I'm not Japanese. So that social construct, that hierarchy does not apply to me. So in some ways I get a free pass. So I yeah, can live true. pretty relaxed. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. And then go. I still get to go out and buy my Gundam. cheap Gundam related products. Hold on. And the public transport. Oh yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, like it's you awesome. cannot go wrong. Okay. Uh, oh, oh, about yeah, the Gundam yeah. ratings. He was talking about plasma model ratings. We had thought about that, but it's just not simply possible for us to show every kit yeah and build them all and then discuss the finer points of them yeah. so what we do uh a lot of times with a significant model is i'll you know we'll build it we'll talk about it on the show you know some things you need to be aware of but i don't really feel the need to like go into specific ratings yeah. because there's enough sources on the internet and you know if you like what you see from our video and you're curious about it then it's worth you know picking up and finding out for yourself because what something you may like about a model might be something somebody else doesn't like about yeah, a model. absolutely so, no, it's all up to you. And Gundam kits on the whole are well built, well oh, made. They're kits. all well yeah. built and they're all well engineered and they all are very similar to each mm. other with some differences, of course. So if, you've, if you're into Gundam and you've built a few models, you kind of know what to expect yeah. and it comes down to what you prefer. Yeah. So. Okay, personal preference. Cool. Mm -hmm. Next, hey guys, which one 144th HG kits would you recommend for a noob just starting out with Gunpla? Pratik 523. I would recommend any of them. Any of them. They're yeah. easy, they're cheap, and there's so many of them that uh, you just get to look through and pick the one you like. Right? Yeah, if, you can't go wrong. If there's a really. suit you like, you'll find it in HG probably. But MG, there's not as many, so you might not find the suit you're looking for. HG, pretty much build anything. So pick the one you like. Pick the one you like. Would you guys ever do an all Principality of Xeon kits episode? Mm, that's an Specifically, idea. kits from the 0079 series. Miss Cal Prime. I will take that into consideration. It's actually a pretty good idea. You know, when we talk about suit releases, I mean, what we showed today, the majority of them are the, the good guys. You know. Good guys always win. Xeon won. tend to be the bad guys and the, the grunt suits and stuff like that. But there's a lot of suits out there that Xeon stuff we haven't shown yet. Okay. Uh, next question. Hey, Sid and Ryan, I want to buy the Narvish Type 0 model kit. Mm -hmm. I see it is back ordered. I am unsure of what that means can mm -hmm. you help and explain what a back order is and can i still order if a product is back ordered that that's thanks from dreadnought 2044 okay so this is a good question and we can hopefully clear this up for everybody if it's back ordered it means it's most likely still available we just do not have it in stock yet yes so what we've done is we've talked to our distributors and we've placed an order and when they get it they send it to us yep. and anybody who has ordered it will get their payment request and it will, you know. And from companies like Bandai and Tamiya, you're pretty much guaranteed. It's yeah. the smaller Plus guys. Plus kits almost yeah. always will come back. Yeah. 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 And, oh, you know, occasionally, I think we, just, we discussed this before, if it shows discontinued on our site, that's only because the distributors haven't been able to locate yeah. supply. But as soon as they get it back, they let us know it comes back and they're being affordable on our site again. So if it shows back order, yeah, place an order. And I suggest actually placing an order because as soon as we get that stock, you'll get yours. Yeah. But if wait. you wait for it to, you know, to show, show in stock up. and everybody's waiting for it, then everybody places the order at the same time and you might miss out. Yeah. So um, yeah, yeah, when you see back order, just click place yeah. in my card, go through the process. Yeah. That also lets us know that you want it and yeah. we'll find it for you if we can. Yeah. Big manufacturers, normally not a problem. Yeah. Small manufacturers, sometimes a problem. Yeah. So yeah, Depends give it a go. Distributors can do. Absolutely. Next mm -hmm. is, hi Sid and Ryan, my question is, I know Sid always talks about his fave MG, but which mm -hmm. is his fave HG kit? Also, will we ever see them re-release Gundam Wing G unit kits? Also, my No Limit build would be a 1-1 one, one scale. Kaneda's bike from Akira. That's awesome. That's a bloody good idea. That's a great idea. I would love that bike. Thanks for the great show and keep up the good work mm -hmm. from cars, robots and games. Yeah, that's a... That's a very nice mm. idea. I don't know about the reissue of the G Gundam 
wing Gundam G units? I don't know. I have no idea. It's all Bandai's thing. So, can't answer that. But the first part of his question there, can you read that again? Hey, Sid and Ryan, my question is how Sid always talks about his fave mm, MG, yes. but the which favorite? is his fave HG? HG. I'm not going to say anything right now because it, I want to uh, do an episode like okay. we do with the MGs. Okay. My little top five or top ten. And then uh, if I say something now, I just spoil the episode. So, haha, -ha, you got to wait. You got to wait. Tune in for the next episode <laughs> of Gunpla TV. But it's not the next episode of Gunpla TV, probably. Uh, no. In future <laughs> episode of Gunpla TV. <laughs> Sometime in the future. It. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hold next on. question. Well, oh. mm -hmm. If you get to drink, I want to drink my tea. Sorry, it's not gonna related. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Sid. Mm. Uh, my question never appears on the show. It just did. Okay, just, go. Things just changed. <laughs> I wanted to ask you how hard PGs are to build. I'm interested in the Strike PG. I've built several HGs, one MG and a bunch of Armored Core yep. slash Metabot kits. Well, if you build HGs and MGs, then you can definitely do a PG. And the PG Strike is probably the best Gundam model out there. It's fantastic. It's just, there's more pieces and it's time consuming. That's the thing with a PG. But it can do, it's like crazy. It can do so much more. It's so sturdy. The PG Strike is probably the best Gundam kit available. Yeah. Absolutely. Build. And and you did a build of it quite a few. Uh, a few I episodes. have built the Strike Freedom mm -hmm. and I have built the 30th anniversary clear version of the Strike and the Strike is it's so good. It's such a good kit. As good as your Pepsi? Better because I don't like Pepsi. <laughs> That's from Anatolius Merck. All right. Okay, I have a question. I can't understand Japanese. So if I were to buy a Gundam model kit, would I have any difficulties if I just looked at the pictures to put it together? He's actually got a gamer's tag there, XXXB16XM1KK3XX. Thank you very much, XXXB. Okay. <laughs> uh, you, when you first uh, want to build a gun kit and you have not experienced it, well, you're going to need to pay close attention to that manual. For the most part, it's pretty straightforward, straight but there are forward. some little symbols featured there showing you uh, kind of like order of things should be done or how oh, like something decals should be Decals and stickers. Decals and stickers. Like However, uh, we did an episode of Gumpa TV way back when. And we talked about and we showed the manual and explained those symbols. So just uh, go back, go through our early episodes of Gumpa TV, probably like episode 10 or something. And uh, you'll... But you'll it's true. I mean, I, even before I came to Japan without any Japanese, I could put kids together. Yeah. I just got to make sure those characters match up with yeah. the characters next to your decal or whatever. And so I mean, unfortunately, right. like all the numbering is in English, you yeah. know, E14 and then sequence one, two, three, like you'll, you'll be fine. Yeah, just uh, pay attention, but yeah, you don't need Japanese at all. Yeah. Look at me. You have a living example of a man building a <laughs> tank. Doesn't speak any Japanese. Yeah, doesn't speak any, just konnichiwa, that's about <laughs> it. Alright. <laughs> Next. Hey guys, can I get my opinion on what should I, what should be my first master grade? I love Xeon model suits and I've narrowed my choices down to two. The perfect Xeon and the Akgang. Ak 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 love your show. Keep up the good job. That's from Shikamura 1999. I would build the Shikamura. I Sorry. would build the Z, perfect Xeon because it's so big, Ryan. <laughs> it's like huge. It's almost perfect grade size. Really? Yeah, it's like this monster. It's not set. that huge. No, 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 no it's different. Right. But uh, a thing about the uh, perfect Xeon is that it's because it's so big and it's more expensive than the regular MGs. Is Bandai doesn't produce it as much, okay. so a lot of times it's unavailable. Do we so, have it? Yeah. Uh, I have to look. We'll put a link in For the longest time, not the longest time, for a while it was discontinued. I thought yeah. that was it. It's done. You know, it's so big, Bandai's not going to make it anymore. And then they made it again. We got okay. another batch. So it's to, probably still orderable on the site. Okay. For those, for anybody who's interested in that kit, yeah, if it's available, order it because they come in kind of like the PGs, less frequently than the Okay. The cool. That guy's a good kit too, but <laughs> it's better, right, Ryan? Uh, that's what she said. Okay, so we know you're Sagata. a big fan of K-pop, Sid. Mm -hmm. But who's your number one K-pop idol? And as for Ryan, did you get into Gunpla because of the MG Wing Zero EW version with the Angel Wings? You built the Zero Custom, was your first I did, yeah. I did, and yes. I just really like the look of the kit. Yeah, it's working. I, I mean, the f actually the first time I bought a kit was I was in Japan on holiday. Mm -hmm. I went to Yodobashi Camera, and Yodobashi has like a, a floor of hobby stuff, and they yeah. have like tons of Gundam and I was like oh my god finally like as a kid I used to dream about this it's stuff. Mecca. yeah yeah I go there every month and the nice thing in Yodobashi is um, they also have displays of the built kits yeah which yeah. is 
Yeah, phenomenal. Really cool. And of course, they have the displays of the, the coming kits. So yeah. If you yeah. want to look at the stuff that's coming in a couple months' time, you can still go down there and see them. Yeah, that's really good. So, yeah, uh, I mean, did it get me to Gundam? Probably. Mm -hmm. But I was always just like a mech fan. Yeah. Number one K pop idol. I don't really have one. <laughs> I love them all. He loves equally. them all equally. Yeah. The length of their legs is all equal. No, it's not. Sunny is shorter. <laughs> 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 their legs just go on it's, and on. See, I'm taller. All right, go. Okay. Carry on before I get distracted. Um, if I were to oh, say so spray a metallic paint on a piece of plastic, mm -hmm. should I top coat it? I've heard of nasty results of top coat reacting violently with the paints. Which top coat would be most appropriate if I sprayed clear paints to make it metallic, red, etc.? Is that enough? Or would I have to top coat after that? That's I guess Korean music lover 23. Uh, I have not had any trouble with the, with the uh, spraying of metallic paint, you know, whether it's a silver or a gun metal color. I haven't had any difficulty spraying a top coat afterwards. I haven't heard of it. So maybe I've just been lucky, but of course I don't go crazy with the top coat right close to it. Uh, I noticed that a lot of the metallic paints, gun metal especially, it can tend to bubble up when you first spray it. So your initial spray of the color has to be careful and mm. then you can go slowly with the top coat after that you know what song is stuck in my head now that taxi taxi mr taxi <laughs> yeah it's just since he it's said that it's just like song ever yeah best video ever it's <laughs> fantastic little, those uniforms were very cute hey Sid and ryan yeah i'm not 100 percent sure i guess if you have answered this before but now do you mask small how do you mask small areas to paint? Also, my main question, do you guys know of a way to paint clear plastic well for things like aircraft cockpits? Uh, how to mask small areas? That's something I want to show on a future episode. Okay. I'm just waiting I think for... I might have to do some masking on the yeah. tank, possibly as well. So. Uh, I'm waiting actually for a specific kit to come back in the stock because it's very... I've done it before and I can show how to go about masking certain areas. That's the plan. And if I do get that shortly which hopefully will be the case then uh, we can use also that to work on your tank actually um brian mm -hmm. on one of the boss balls did do some uh masking of his tank to like create like a military yeah kind of camo yeah, so uh, if you want to go and look i mean he used like play-doh or something but oh, i will yeah, do yeah. it again in our Maybe. episode for sure yeah uh when it comes to painting cockpits and canopies i'm not quite sure i understand the question like if you talk about the canopy it's just do you want to clear like, change the color so it's not clear anymore uh, yeah. if you spray a flat coat it, it will go um, ice up and stuff if yeah. you spray a, a gloss coat it should be fine but if you actually want to spray color you're gonna have to do some masking because it's clear yeah unless, unless you want to tint it like a black like if you have a whole canopy piece but there's supposed to be some steel ridges over the top of it well then you're gonna have to mask mm. but you can get something called a liquid mask and actually paint it on there so okay. to cover up well. So yeah, if you want to clarify, yeah, feel free to write back in and explain more in more detail what you yes. describe. A uh, nice episode as always. Now the next real grade goes on display. I think yep. on the ninth, there's almost no doubt that it's a Zeta. Mm -hmm. Do you think we'll see a stable transformation that can go into future real grades? That's from Check Sky three three one. Yes, it looks like the Zeta is going to be the next real grade. I'm really happy about that actually because I thought that it would be number three. I yeah. thought that they would do. They would do the RX-72, they would do the Zaku, and then they would do the Zeta. And uh, maybe the Zeta, the transformation kind of was too difficult at the time, and they put it off. I don't know what Bandai's plan was, but it looks like Zeta's coming. And whether they're actually going to be do, able to do a transformation, I'm leaning towards no. I think some parts will be able to move or pivot to enable it to go into that flight form, but I think you're going to see us pulling parts off and putting different parts on okay so maybe some part swapping will be involved but i'm really 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 interested in seeing how banner does it because every real great so far has been great so. hey sid and ryan mm -hmm. uh have you ever encountered difficulties building the mg shinanju that's for you i encountered stubborn parts which won't go in especially the ball joint connecting the torso and upper body to the waist and legs my question is how have you encountered these stubborn yep. parts before? That's from Carrot Chronicles. Yes, uh, I know exactly what he's talking about with the Shinanju. This is a common occurrence. A lot of people are having some difficulty connecting the bottom, you know, the legs, hips to the top, the torso. Because in a normal macerate kit, uh, for the most part, it's polycaps. 
you just pop it on there. The poly cap will expand and to take the the mail connector, and it, it will move. But with the uh, Shenanju, it's unlike any other kit you've seen before because it's so big and so heavy that poly caps would just weaken and it would fall. So they had to do it without poly caps, which means every fit is tight. So uh, I will show on a future episode how to go about dealing with that okay. that connection because I've actually received emails from people as well asking about it, showing me pictures of their broken piece. So there's there's how you can go about avoiding breaking it and then how to fix a break. We'll, we'll talk about those. Sweet. Hey guys, awesome custom Sid. Keep up the good work. Thank you. It would be cool if you showed us how you did some of the mods instead of just telling mm -hmm. us. I'm not saying I to know. do it right away because I'm pretty sure you and Ryan have your own plans for upcoming episodes for the show. However, if possible, can you show us how you did the mods to the customs in an episode or two in the near future when you are able to? That's from Neon Wave 1. Yes, that is in the plan as well. Uh, I kind of got sprang on me that people want to see the customs so I thought I'd show them and then I, as I was explaining them I, I was really realizing that you know, maybe I should you know, at least show but I can't really show as well, I've already got a finished product so I will show uh, some of the custom stuff I've done but in some of the early episodes I mean you showed how to put on custom yeah I showed how to like remove panel lines yeah. I wish it's a good idea to revisit it though yeah, yeah. yeah. there's something I want to show it's just uh, I gotta wait for the, the material I need yep uh, this is quite funny. I know this might sound weird slash funny, but I was watching this week's episode mm -hmm. and noticed that if you mixed Sid and Ryan's face together, it's almost like Chuck Norris. Oh, it's Sid and Ryan like some distant relative. Is Sid and Ryan like some distant relative of Chuck Norris? Can you guys come and comment on this? Thanks. Is he Canadian? I don't think so. But he and I do have something in common. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah we yeah, we yeah. can grow a mean beard. Yes, well, yeah. kind of. Yeah. I. I, I <laughs> He says, can you comment on this? And all I can say is, uh, okay, I can comment on it, but I don't really have an That's answer. what I'm saying. Maybe somewhere, if we trace our... Oh, we should take back. Photoshop. We could use Photoshop overlay our You're faces. a Photoshop guru. Yeah. Well, you know what they say about Chuck Norris? They say lots of things about Chuck Norris. Doesn't he never lose? <laughs> he never lose. The best Chuck Norris joke I ever heard was, uh, as a child, Chuck Norris in school had a test, and he answered every question with the word violence. Chuck, <laughs> Norris, Chuck Norris solves every question with every problem with violence. I just he remember passes. watching like a, I know it's not new, but the World of Warcraft ads with Chuck Norris. Oh yeah. Yeah. That was funny. Chuck, we love you. Don't hurt us. Chuck E. Cheese. Sid Ryan. What are your thoughts on the song Gangnam Style? <laughs> it's a big YouTube sensation lately. Yes. Please search for it on YouTube. Watch it and then I had actually it. never heard of it before I read yeah, the comment I and I just typed it in. I had to watch it. I watched it, I noticed that uh, several other million people have watched it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. It's, you get this uh, this kind of music that it has a good like groove and you can just put repetitive kind of melody lyrics to it and it works. You know, like years ago, it was like, I like to move it, move it. Like, that was a huge oh, hit. Yeah. Kids were singing that. When I first showed up in Japan, kids were singing oh, that. Oh, every damn shuffling. Every damn shuffling. Like, you get that that kind of music, that kind of video that works. The LMFO, LMFAO or whatever. Well, just the remix is like the guy, what is it? Breaking in my windows. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll, you'll get something like that. <laughs> this, that I, these kind of things actually restore my faith in humanity. What is it? Friday, <laughs> it's Friday. What's that song? No, let's not talk about that. That's not good. That's terrible. Yeah, but it was Gank huge was internet. Good. Yeah. It was so bad that it was good. It was Star Wars Holiday Special bad. That's why, <laughs> that's why people watch it. Okay, next. Ritz E. Mm -hmm. Perhaps it's me, but I have this feeling that there's a high chance Bandai might be sneaking in the RG New Gundam and Sazabi. Sazabi. Sazabi in 2013. It's mm -hmm. the 25th anniversary of Char's counterattack after all. What do you guys think? Will New Gundam and Sazbi get this RG, their RG release next year or will Bandai follow suit and release Double Zeta in RG first before going into Char's counter-attack? I think this guy's uh, very is astute. I think we'll probably see a new Gundam soon. Yeah. They're actually, uh, maybe we won't. We're going to see a new Gundam version Katoki in December <laughs> okay. as a Master Grade. They're redoing the Master Grade, the old pre-2000 kit or whatever. They're redoing that with uh, version Ka. They just announced, just announced it. And I just saw the first picture today. Sweet. And it's going to be crazy come December. Merry Christmas to me. We're probably not going to see a, a perfect grade this year if they're going to do something like that. That's why I'm thinking that we're seeing a new Gundam again. But when it comes to the RG, I don't think we're going to see a double Zeta. I think they'll probably look at Char's counter, Char's yeah. counter attack. 
New Gundam, maybe because they're doing the MG, maybe you're not going to see that. But I would not be surprised to see a Sasabi. I don't think it's going to be that difficult. Mm. Who knows? Do you think with our internet cred, we could get into Bandai's factory? We brought that up before. Uh, we still get we questions about it. We have to get the people who speak fluent Japanese to contact the people who are Japanese and say, hey, can we get in there? We, we want to. We try. Yeah. Yeah, it would be cool. Answers were not very forthcoming. Yes, and it was a bit limp-wristed. Yes. That's all I will say. Hey, Sid and Ryan. Mm. <laughs> Thanks for showing the customs. I know it is considered taboo to use cement when building Gunpla, but so many of my kids are missing their V-fins. Is there any reason why I shouldn't glue these finicky little pieces down? Mm -hmm. Or are there any other creative solutions? Also, a question more directly aimed at Sid. How do you feel about Luongo? <laughs> Luongo. Go. Leaving Longer. personally, as a Bruins fan, I guess this is sports oh, this, related. This hurts me. Yeah, I'm fan. actually Thanks excited to see Schneider in net. He's just so much more likable. Uh, let me tackle the first part of that question first. <laughs> I'll have a drink. Oh really? Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, you. Right. I don't know why you answer oh, because uh, mm. I have no idea. Mm. Actually, uh, the first part. Yeah. This when he asked about the uh, the glue. Um, you can use glue. It's not taboo. Of course you can yeah, use glue. Yeah, cement is great. And especially for parts like V-fins and stuff. My only suggestion is that you make sure that you've finished your painting, <laughs> top coating, <laughs> panel lining, whatever you need to do before you glue that piece yeah. down. Test build the kit first. If that piece needs to move because it's for articulation purposes, then you don't want to be gluing anything like that. Mm. You want to know that what you can glue down needs to stay in this one spot. But V-fins and stuff, yeah, glue it, glue it down for sure. Don't lose your stuff. Sweet. Yeah, and Luongo. Uh, I don't know, I have mixed feelings about this because I wasn't in Vancouver when he came. And uh, you don't know hockey very well, Ryan. So Is this on ice? Yes, yeah, ice hockey. You don't know ice hockey very well, but I do. <laughs> and uh, for the longest time as a Vancouver Canucks fan, I always felt that we had a high quality team, but our goaltending was always our weakness. And when you get to the playoffs, you need good goaltending. And uh, when Luongo came, I was like, great, yeah, we, got a, we finally got a good goaltender. He doesn't have to be fantastic, he just has to be good enough for, to keep us in games for the, so our team can win. And he almost did. We got to Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Finals. Like, That's pretty good. That's pretty good. But uh, unfortunately for him, uh, management decided to pay him like obscene amounts of money. And so now... That's bad. Uh, well, it's good for him. But when you get paid so much money that nobody wants to trade for you because they can't pay oh, you okay. you know you, your time with a team is limited you're not going to be there forever unless you're Martin Bruder but uh, what happens is somebody else comes along who's cheaper and, and equal or better and they they're gonna have to try and move the old guy but he's too expensive to move so this is his conundrum okay. he makes too much money so I kind of feel bad for the guy he makes too much money I mean he make, he's he's set he's making money but he doesn't get to play if that's what he really wants to do is play okay but it's just talking hockey, not gun. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. isn't hockey TV. Sorry. <laughs> hockey TV sponsored Ice by hockey. Sid. Ice, Ice hockey. hockey sponsored yeah. by Canada. What I miss most <laughs> about Canada. So anyway, I, I think that's it uh, for Yeah, don't forget to answer the question. Yeah. Who do you want yeah. to direct the next Robotech slash Macross movie? Yes. The reboot? Great. Great. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd actually like to hear your replies. Yeah. Spielberg. Murder that guy. Spielberg? He would do all right. <sighs> You've seen that... I know, I don't know if we brought it up. The, uh, Why did I say that? Okay. South Park when Indiana, Yeah, we don't Spielberg. need to talk about this anymore. We don't need to talk about this anymore. Let's end this episode now before we go off on even more. Yes, please go tangents. to our Facebook. Um, we always put pictures. Yep, yeah, and uh, on our uh, Hobbiting TV blog, yeah. there'll be more pictures of the stuff you've seen on the show today. And look, if you want to, um, you've got some nice photos of a kid, you want to post them up on the blog, just yeah. uh, submit them yeah. and we'll get them up for you, I promise. Sounds good. Uh, and uh, anything else? I don't know. I think that's it. One All day right. we'll be on Google Plus. Yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> All right, so that's it. We're actually, ready? I have a question. Oh, okay. Sorry, Sid. Okay. How many guys out there actually use Google Plus? When it that's first started, I, mean. I think there was this this pouring of people towards it just because it was unique. But I don't think it offers enough yeah. difference from Facebook yeah. that we're seeing people start to come back. But hey, yeah, let, let me know. Back. Like, uh, choose your director yeah. and let me know if you use Google Plus. What you use it for? Yeah. I'm interested because uh, I don't know. I don't see the difference. Is there something special with Google Plus? 
I don't know. I don't use it. I don't know. All right, anyway, so, so that wraps up this episode. And thank you, Sid. Okay. Thank you, uh, Pepsi. Oh, hold on. Yeah. Pepsi. Drink Pepsi. No, you don't. See you next week. <laughs>